Many may look back at the career of the Boston strong boy John L. Sullivan and wonder, how good was the International Boxing Hall of Famer? We're going to dive into his background to provide some answers. John Lawrence Sullivan, or as he's known to many, John L., was born October 15, 1858, in Roxbury, Boston, Massachusetts, to parents Michael and Kathleen Sullivan. Sullivan excelled in multiple sports and particularly took an interest in baseball, before ultimately choosing boxing and turning pro in 1878. Sullivan defeated Patty Ryan by a ninth-round stoppage for the Bare Knuckle Championship of the World in Mississippi City, Mississippi, on February 7, 1882, though, some dispute this as a world championship fight. We've seen competition levels rise and often associate the modern age with being better or more advanced. This is true, to a degree, as far as advancements in medicine and some techniques. What can't be accounted for is how often boxers of the past fought, along with the number of active boxers competing during those times. Sometimes, how often you fight, bodes well against the level of competition. John L. Sullivan is estimated to have competed in 400 to 500 fights, calculating his official fights under the Marquess of Queensbury rules, his London prizefighting rules matches, and a multitude of cross-country exhibitions. Sullivan fought bare-knuckled against Jake Kilrain in what was dubbed to be the World Heavyweight Championship. The fight took place near Hattiesburg, Mississippi, on July 9, 1889, and ended after 75 rounds when Kilrain's corner threw in the sponge. Sullivan stood at 5 feet 10 and a half inches and had a 74-inch reach. His aggregate weight over his career was 208 pounds. Sullivan's size was comparable to the heavyweights of his time. There were larger heavyweights that competed during the time of Sullivan just as we see today. Sullivan, though, was the picture of strength and heavyweight prowess at the time. Sullivan was usually quick out of the gates and was the first to introduce the knockout as a regular occurrence in the sport at a mainstream level. He was often in what would be considered brawls, but he did have some finesse to his game. There are two known videos of Sullivan in some form of action, though at an advanced age, well beyond his prime. Both videos are from around the period in which Jack Johnson was set to defend his World Heavyweight Championship against James J. Jeffries in Reno, Nevada, on July 4, 1910. In one brief video, Sullivan can be seen hitting a speed bag. Sullivan throws around 11 looping shots with many, not all, connecting. One can make of it what they will but it's clear that Sullivan is not only years removed from viable action, but also not in shape, attributing to the display. In another known video, Sullivan can be seen posturing with former world heavyweight champion and the only man to have defeated Sullivan, gentleman James J. Corbett. Sullivan can be seen turning back the clock and actually shows some hand speed for his age as he throws mock shots at a defending Corbett. Sullivan starts with his lead and dominant hand circling and feints with his left. He then repeats the motion before actually fainting again with his left, which indicates in some form that the concept of fainting was a natural action for Sullivan. Sullivan then fakes throwing a looping left hook while following that with a straight right. While the videos are fairly brief, they do somewhat give us an indication of how Sullivan's fighting style may have looked in action. Let's look at the numbers as far as Sullivan's opponents. Keep in mind, there are varying accounts of the number of official fights on his record. For this section, we're going with BoxRec, but viewers can also refer to Cyber Boxing Zone for an even more detailed account. At the time he fought them, Sullivan's officially matched opponents had a combined record of 83 wins, 8 losses, and 16 draws. 25 of those opponents were making their debut. Diving a bit deeper and taking a look at the combined retirement record of those same opponents, the record is 139 wins, 100 losses, and 50 draws. Many of Sullivan's opponents fought only once for their careers. Sullivan did embark on a tour across the country challenging anyone who dared to fight him in a four-round contest over three minutes. There is a ton of legend associated with many accounts of what Sullivan did during his career. After all, it was the early stages of what we now know as the sweet science and took place well over 100 years ago. That said, there were many documented accounts in newspapers. 
Many fans can't decipher a fighter's greatness in the ring without seeing actual footage. In reality, there is no one person that has seen every fight. When you actually strip the layers back and take into account the times, no footage is needed. There is no question that Sullivan is one of the greatest fighters to ever lace up a pair of gloves. The bigger question you'd have to ask yourself is whether or not you would have liked his style. Not every style accommodates everyone's taste. While Sullivan may not have fought all of the best opponents in the combined history of the sport, there is no question that he did fight. As a matter of fact, he fought more than all active fighters today. He was good enough to go an entire career with only one defeat. There were some fights we never got to see, particularly some of the great black fighters at that time. Much of it had to do with the color line being drawn, while a planned scrap with George Godfrey was stopped by police as the fight was set to commence. We can only judge him based on the fights he did indeed fight. He was known as an explosive puncher, and by today's standards, a knockout artist. One thing I think that we can all attest to is the fact that whether we're in the 1800s, 1900s, or 2025, a knockout is still a knockout. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to like and subscribe for future videos.